Welcome back, everybody. It's time again for another hour of uh, this uh, weekend of online conversations through Comic Art Live. John Suntress here from the Word Balloon Podcast. Happy to welcome one of my uh, oldest friends in comics. Uh, go back right to the beginning of Word Balloon. It's Mike Norton, everybody. Good to see you, buddy. Yay! Yes. It's Thank good God. to talk to you, John. I miss you, man. It's so I... ridiculous. We <laughs> literally live like 20 minutes from each other, if that. I was talking to my wife about that today because we were talking about conventions and things like that. And uh, um, I think we've kind of gotten used to it. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't, I don't the idea, The idea of going out somewhere is kind of uh, intimidating now. <laughs> I get it. No, I get it. Are you, we're only a couple of weeks away from C2E2. Will you be there? I, I won't. Wow. This is the first one I will not be at. Wow. And it, it really is nothing to do with the show. It's, it's all about, you know, we, we can't, I, I canceled all the shows I was going to do this year and I didn't think it'd be fair if I went to this one and not the other ones. And I'm still a little freaked out by it. And I just figure I'll also, I didn't, I didn't get on the list in time. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was one of the things like by the, it kind of helped me make the final decision when I was like, Hmm, I th maybe I will. And then I look, I was like, Oh, I'm past deadline. So I'm not going to try. Well, and again, we're local, so it's not a big deal. But I'm so amazed at the out-of-towners that are coming. And it's like... I am, too. December, Chicago in December. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I'm I, not going to lie, because I, I am I'm, I'm a little miss... I, we were just talking about it. I miss everybody, too, so I get it. But at the same time, like I said, I got used to everything. Yeah. Still kind of busy. It's the holidays. Okay. And... Uh, so there's a lot for me to, you know, just say no to, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad people are coming. Like my friend Sean McKeever's coming into town. A bunch of other people are coming. Get to say hey to them. I'm just not going to be uh, setting up a table. Okay, good. Well, then I'll see you after hours. Obviously, that that's good to hear. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I'm still actually thinking about scheduling a, like a dinner or something. I don't. I don't. I haven't uh, really decided. I have to go because I've been working on uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 now. A, and, comic, uh, a comic version of Mystery Science Theater? No, no, the show. I've been working on the show. Actually, wow. Proper. Yeah, I've been I've been doing production design for the new 13th season. And wow. there, uh, I did all the prop design for the tour that's going currently. And they'll be in town that Saturday. So I'll be going to see that that night anyway. So um, that's what I'll be doing on Saturday of C2E2. Okay. Wow. That's great, man. Oh, I'm so glad that's happening. Yeah. It's been, it's been really awesome. I've been, it's uh, kind of a dream come true. So I can totally see that. So um, I know, am I right? Isn't, isn't Joel Hodgson, the original host, isn't he still like kind of, yeah, he's a, he, he, he runs it all. Yeah. Yeah. He, yep. Yep. That's uh, awesome, man. Yeah, he brought. It was actually Todd Knock, who did do the Dark Horse comic of Mystery Science Theater, uh, hooked me up with them, and I've I've been designing stuff for him since February. So that's amazing. My favorite thing that ever happened uh, that I got to witness. Um, I was going to interview Sven Gulli at C two E two where they do the autographs and they got their little backstage area and stuff. So we're getting ready to shoot, and all of a sudden, Joel Hodgson walks up. Oh, like, right, yeah. And he and he's like, "Can I talk to Rich for a second? I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, Spanguli. And yeah. he shakes his hand, and he's like, "I just want you to know, obviously, your show was a major inspiration, for right?" Our yeah. show. And he's like, and also, and then he goes, and this is before Sven. Well, maybe this was early, about five or six years ago. So Sven was national. He's like, "I can't tell you how many of my celebrity friends." Comedians especially love your show. Yeah. He's like, it's Jerry Seinfeld's favorite show. <laughs> and and you know, and it's rich, you know, rich is just Chicago. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very well, much. Well, you know, I mean, if you look at Twitter on a Saturday, it's Saturday night that he plays. Yeah, tonight. Yeah. If you look at Twitter on a Saturday night, 
a lot of it's like when wrestling is playing. You see a lot of little tweets, and they're all talking about Sim Gooley or her wrestling, or in my case, Joe Bob Briggs. Sometimes they'll. Be, I love Joe Bob. Yeah, so I I see it. I know when he plays. I just sometimes I don't I, I don't flip through. I don't have like a regular cable anymore, so I have to. I understand. Yeah. No, no. Well, and you know, uh, obviously, you got to get the digital uh, antenna going to take advantage right. of all yep. the sub channels below, uh, like you know, the networks and everybody else. And no, you know, it's on MeTV and everything. Yep. And uh, in fact, uh, it, I don't know about the rest of the nation, but <clears throat> at least in Chicago, literally after our last uh, panel tonight, it ends at uh, eight o'clock um, Eastern time and seven o'clock our time, so it's right in time for Svengoli. Everybody go watch it. Absolutely, man. And won't interfere <laughs> with uh, watching us. I Not think that- he, I think Joel mentioned Spinguli when he was here. He came and visited the studio, and I think he mentioned Spinguli. That's great. Hey, yeah. you got to – all right, and again, well, 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 I'll talk to you after the show. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, but, no, I love Joe Bob, and, in fact, I guess Brody Mullet also says uh, – good name, Brody Mullet. I think, I've, I think I've seen your movie, Brody Mullet, there. Or your Brody radio Mullet, movie. yes. I like that it's very a much. Comic by Dan Johnson, isn't it? Brody Mullet. <laughs> you see the crawl underneath us. That's where you can go to buy some of Mike's amazing art. Oh Mike, yeah, your stuff is a bargain. Well, I'll, I mean, a lot of it is older stuff, so they market pretty cheap. It, okay. Because I haven't, I don't think I've drawn on paper, paper. since. 2007 maybe wow yeah it's it's been a long time yeah so if there's not a uh there's not a lot of it left and it's not not like it's a collector's item so no but well mike i I pulled some images and uh i mean right away i want to show like this is a steal oh right yeah nobody's bought that and that was a cover guys come on yeah and it's and folks, it's I mean, I'll say the price seven hundred bucks for this incredible shot of Connor Kent and Superman fighting each oh. other. Art and Franco wrote the story, I remember distinctly oh. many times, and not only on Young Justice, but Billy Batson and the Power yeah. of Shazam. You guys had a great, significant run there. One of but my yeah. favorite books I've ever worked on. And in fact, as you say, it's been so long since you've done paper. Um, I rem- uh, one of my favorite memories is we're either flying to San Diego, flying from San Diego on shitty Spirit Airlines. Yes, I said shitty. I said that. I don't want Mike <laughs> to get in trouble. But uh, I'm in one row, Mike and Tim Sealer in the other, and I'm watching Mike draw on his Cintiq the power of Shazam and stuff while we're, yeah. while we're flying. It was awesome. It was really interesting. Yeah, uh, that's the thing about the new technology, and especially now with an iPad. You know, that four-hour flight, you know, isn't as much of a – like, you don't have to complain so much about losing the day's work. Yeah, Um, I hear you. Absolutely, man. There's a lot of guys that just do it on their iPads. Of course. No, and and honestly, even – you know, I helped Bill Cox recruit for this show – and as I talk to artists and stuff, it's like, all right, who's still, you know, who's still drawing on paper and stuff? Yeah, you it know? is something yeah. you have to ask now. Yeah, absolutely. Here, uh, I'm going to show some classic moments. This is from Metamorpho Year One. Oh, I love drawing that too. That's that it. was on. That was on paper. Yeah, that was uh, Jesse Delperdang uh, inked it. Wow, yeah. and so that's Simon Stagg, obviously getting uh, yep. Yep. Rex Mason at gunpoint. That's yep. awesome. You know, I was just in Baltimore. And uh, Ramona Fraden, she wasn't there, but she was selling pieces. And uh, I got this great green arrow yeah. from uh, from her. And it's st- another person that sells her art way too conservatively. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I love hearing stories about Ramona because, you know, in this day and age, you, you're, you're always ready to hear the stories about people that are terrible in the business. And you. I've never heard a bad thing about Ramona Freighton. <laughs> have you met her? Have you met her? I have never met her. I've seen her. Like, I've been near her. But I've never gone up and introduced myself. Or anything. I, I was able to buy a Metamorpho sketch from her in person. Mm-hmm. And was really glad to do that. And then another Which is time, easy to do, also. They had... These two guys were repping for her 
Friday and Saturday at Baltimore Con, and um, they they had literally dozens yeah. of these great like eight by eight square sketches: Batman, Superman, Metamorpho, Aquaman, obviously. I I have three pieces from her. I've got this Metamorpho one, the Green Arrow one that I bought at Baltimore, and then also I don't have an Aquaman, but I have a Namor from her. Oh, and I like that Namor. Way. So yeah, that's kind of neat. And then she does that. She I don't think she ever actually officially drew for Marvel, but she certainly does a lot of Marvel hero sketches. Sure, sure. So yeah, 95, I always think of her as DC. Yeah. Oh yeah, but ninety five years old, still going. God bless her, man. She's amazing. Ninety five. Yep. I didn't know. She, oh, wow, that's crazy. And, and friends who help run uh, Fan Expo were telling me that, like, one's like, oh, no, I talked to her, like, a month ago. Still razor sharp. That's Which awesome. Still, yeah, man. That's Seriously, man, when you hear about the 80 and 90-year-olds that are still, like, razor sharp and kicking ass, it's like, fucking go. Nice going, man. Mm -hmm. And, again, I think she has something to do. She likes doing this and everything. And I, I, these guys are out there selling their sketches for That's her. the best case scenario. That's where I want to be. Absolutely, man. I'm so with you. All right, let's show some more art, art from you from back in the day. Uh, this is great. This is from Trinity. Oh, wow. Yeah, Trinity. And it's such a great splash page of Green Arrow in action and stuff. So I love that. Again, very reasonably priced, kids. I'm just saying. I And really, I want my – I'm, I'm <laughs> listen, we're talking. We're having fun. But I want to help Mike sell this I, stuff. I, I really. Thank you. I appreciate oh, it, Jeff. And Mike, if I had the bank account, I would have beaten everybody to it right now <laughs> and bought a shit ton of this stuff. I, I mean, forgot I forgot who inked that because I had so many different inkers on Trinity. There were a lot of us uh, doing the backups. There were Well, there was three of us, but I know we had different inkers. I know Andy Parks did a bunch of them, but I don't think that he did that one. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Here's another piece. Uh, I believe. All, oh, no. that's Superman Confidential. Yep. I got to draw the. Who are those guys again? Why did I forget? The He's Forever it, uh, People. The Forever People. Yeah. yeah. I love those little beatniks. Absolutely. And you get a little uh, boom, two match, two back. I think that was the first comic I ever inked of my own. Really? Yeah. Wow. I love your Superman face. I love drawing Superman. I don't think I'm the best at him, but I do try to draw the classic face that I remember from being a kid. And well, I, I throw a little burn in there because I can't not. That was the, one of the first DC comics I ever bought. So, Well, that's interesting because I was going to say, I think your Superman face is very much a cross between Burn and Kurt Swan. Yeah, I mean, that would be what I was Thank you. That's what I was going for. One time, uh, that's, you that's, know, we're... here's the thing when I was a kid, I was just like everybody else. I'm like, Superman's so boring, you can't really do anything with him. Batman's where it's at, and now I am completely reversed. And I, I, like, as an adult, I've I'm I there's nothing less interesting to me than Batman, but Superman I could draw all day, and I don't know why that is. Well, I, I'll even go a step further regarding Kurt Swan. It's funny. I was just telling Bill Cox in the last hour, I own very few pages. I own a JSA page uh, of yours mm. where it sure as hell looks like you, you cast me as the mayor. Oh, yeah. I did definitely draw you in that. <laughs> so it's awesome that I'm talking to yeah, you. Yeah, you're JSA definitely page. in that JSA issue I did. That's yeah. awesome. And uh, I've got – so I've got that page from you. Uh, I have a great Doug Brathwaite um, – Bill Reinhold Punisher page. Oh, wow. That I'm very proud of and stuff. But I, I bought for one of my birthdays, I bought a Kurt Swan page. It's just Lois and Clark dialogue. Superman's not even on the page, but I love it. And further, as you said about just Superman in general and drawing him and stuff, um, that's my line as far as when I hear a podcaster go, I hate Kurt Swan. It's stuff that's so simple and it looks like a, a little kid's book. It's like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That guy was a genius. Yeah, there, there are. I mean, you. Can, it's not just comics. It's just anything. If somebody, they kind of just show their ass when they say things like that. You yep. just. It's like, hey, I, I just raised the sign that said, I, I really don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Or, you know, I mean, that's what kids say. Kids say that kind of stuff. Kids that haven't been around in like. Right. Uh, learned 
Because I was like that. I, I mean, Steve Ditko, who I have artwork of on my arm. When I was a kid, I was like, <laughs> this guy can't draw. What are you talking? This That's is awesome. horrible. Because I was so used to seeing like Ramita and Andrew. Yeah, the clean stuff. Yeah. And I did. I When I saw that, I was like, ugh. Because Mar- when I started buying comics, like it was, uh, uh, I think Ron Friends was drawing Ama- Amazing Spider-Man, who's clearly like very, you know, uh, Kirby influenced and yeah. stuff like that. And then they were putting out Marvel Tales at the same time, which were reprints of the old Ditko. And so I grabbed one of those one day and I was like, oh, what is this? <laughs> and then I, you know, that you learn. Yes. And you're just like, wow, this guy was on another level. Frank Robbins is like that for me when he was doing the invaders. I but but something in the back of my brain even then clicked where I'm like, this is really ugly. I don't like it. I'm still buying this book, and and there's something about this art that I can't stop looking at it. Yeah. It wasn't well, until I was an adult. And then also seeing his uh, comic strip stuff, his Johnny Hazard comic strip, holy fuck. Yeah. He's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. There are artists like that where they draw, you You look at it and you go, oh, this, I don't like anything in here, but it is just elicited a, a response from me. And I know that this isn't bad. This is just, uh, I won't name artists because it sounds like I'm insulting them, but it's It's actually not an insult. It's like, uh, this is their style, you know? It's like- yes. Well, that's, I, I read a, uh, someone, uh, by the way, we're going to have him tomorrow afternoon. I'm not going to interview him. I'll get Howard when I need to, but Howard Chicken's going to be on. I think. Oh, I love Howard. Yeah. And I saw somebody complain about Howard stuff and go, you know, all his faces look the same. And it's like, that's style. Yeah. That that's, is. Not a, that's not a I mistake. Mean, that's you style. can make, you can make a joke about that. I can make a joke about that. I think that's funny that he, I mean, he does, but the thing is he, he's always drawn the same face. And the same face is him, like him oh, from yeah. like forty years ago. Yeah. And it's like I'm cool with that, man. I, I still am. Because <laughs> you look at like Ruben Flag, and you're like, he drew himself. <laughs> he drew himself in that comic. Book. Absolutely, man. That's hilarious. You're right. I, I love Howard Jacob. I love He's the best. Him. We we were at a convention with him in Spain, and my wife just fell in love with the guy. <laughs> and, and when it came time we were putting out the battle book compendium i was like i need to find somebody to write the intro and my my wife goes why don't you get that grumpy guy from spain and i'm like are you talking about how chicken <laughs> did, did he do it no I, I i i i didn't ask him because i didn't He's an intimidating guy, even when you like when he likes you, it's still and I'm like, here, write the intro for this book. I know you haven't read and I don't want to make you read it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm he would he would have probably been very you know accommodating, but you know, no, it that, is well into me knowing him, I was having technical problems, and he's very like hit me on this day or yeah. uh late after late morning, my time. That's like a good window where I can talk. No problem. It just wouldn't work. And I'm like, the whole time, like, oh, he's going to hate me. He's going to hate me. Yeah. I'm laughing. I mean, he's really, he's, I mean, he's still a grumpy old man, but he's, he really is like a much nicer, calmer person. And truly, as you know, one of the best dinner companions you could have, the stories. It's just, yeah. I mean, he has this exterior. I mean, you know, there are guys like that in the business that you, they, they give out this, you're you're afraid of them, but they're really nice people when you meet them. It I, well, I I've had this from the opposite too, where people say that I'm intimidating because I'm a giant and I'm never smiling and I look like I'm about to stab them or something. You know, I look like <laughs> the killer in a slasher movie. You're but, like, well, you know, I I don't know if you remember this. We were at a really tiny show. In two, like we met in 2005 or six. I had you on the show a couple of times. This is before I really got to know you mm-hmm. and Crank and, and 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 Scotty and those guys and stuff. And and really, and I think even uh, Brian Salazar of Around Comics had the same experience where we're like, hey man, you know, and like we're trying to have casual talk, and it's like, hey, I, I really hope I'm not bothering you. You know, I don't want to be like, you know, Kathy Bates or anything on you. And you were a sweetheart, man. You put your hand on my shoulder, you're like, 
John, we're friends. It's me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, like, I have like, to remind people sometimes because I do come off like. Uh... Well, but Mike, like you've said yourself, you're you spend, I mean, a good portion of your day hunched over the drafting board. Oh, yeah, right? sure. Yeah. yeah. And you get into your work. So, no, it's, I mean, no, it's I, fine. It's but, my yeah, personality. Once we, once we crack the veneer. You're 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 America's guest. You're great, man. Uh, don't kill yourself. You know that. So here, I'm going to show more art as we're talking. It's Let's see what we got. It's the truth. All right, here's Marvel Adventures Spider-Man. Yeah, that's with Sean Marvel. McKeever. That was my. F no, it wasn't my first Marvel work. I, Gravity was my first Marvel work, but yeah, that was fun to do. I got to finally draw Spider-Man. And also, yeah, mentioning Gravity, I didn't grab a Gravity page. There are lots of Gravity pages. Mm -hmm. and how awesome is it that truly? You, you and Sean created a hero for the Marvel Universe. It's uh, it's amazing. It's something I didn't let myself think about for a long, long time. Um, and, it, I mean, we make a lot of jokes about it because the character has sort of become a joke. You know, they, whenever you need somebody that's not quite uh, Great Lakes Avengers loser, but you want to make fun of somebody, some writer will pull gravity out, you know? Well, like, yeah. He's like the punching bag for all comic writers. As and, long as uh, they don't kill him. As long as they don't. Well, they him. did that immediately after. Oh, we, that's right. They, they, they killed him. immediately. they can't do anything else to him. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, it's great because I, we really, when we came up with them, we wanted to make, you know, the next Spider-Man. We wanted that he's very heavily influenced by what we felt reading Spider-Man. Sure. And I think uh, like a lot of the stuff that we wanted to do with him in our minds, like we had this great, you know, you know, future for him. A lot of that, I think, got covered uh, by new characters. Like, you know, like I think like Kamala Khan is like a perfect example of like yes. what we would have loved to have done. Sure. But she makes more sense in that she's representing a, a different uh, viewpoint yes. where ours was literally the white guy from the Midwest who came out to New York. And while I think they're both valuable yeah. uh, approaches, I don't know if it's, I mean, if that's a, a, a viewpoint that's popular, right? I think I would love to do a, like a dual story where you have not a like a a debate sort of thing, but it's sort of like the viewpoint from the clueless kid that came from the Midwest, and then like a Kamala Khan who's lived in the city all of her life, all good, and been a person of a, of a different like uh, uh, upbringing. Yeah, background and upbringing, sure. That would have been a really cool dynamic, I think. Yeah. Also, I mean, he's a little older than her. So, I mean, he's obviously going to think he knows more. And the truth is they both don't know anything. You should uh, – That's uh, this sounds like a good pitch for Mark Benicia. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, well, it's yeah. it's something – I mean, I've I've told Sean about it a long time ago. I, I, I thought it would be kind of an interesting thing because one of the things we've always done with him is constantly – show that gravity is wrong and he learns from his mistakes and i think that's a valuable viewpoint these days Agreed. <laughs> when everybody is either so wrong or so right there's never a a guy that makes a mistake and then learns from it and says oh i need to be this way not this way i think that's very smart and i agree with you and uh, I, and i i, I yeah. yeah i think there's a I, I think uh, there's room for that in superheroes for people because that's what it's about, right? They're supposed to inspire people to be better. So, would you? What was your creator own thing that took place in Wisconsin that you and Sean did? Oh, that was Sean. That's all Sean's. Um, that's the waiting place. The waiting place. Yeah, right, I never get. I never a, get the title right. I was going to say. A, the yeah, story. it's like a teenage coming of age story. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, he's I, actually I, working on more of that. Oh, that's great because I was going to ask: Would you guys consider? I, it seems like now the environment is even better. For yeah, that kind of book. Would you guys consider reputting it out? Never. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, he he's he's always looking at stuff like that because we kind of put a capper on it. We put a uh, 
uh, he he reprinted it with IDW, and we did a eight page story of like where are they now? Oh, funny. And um, yeah, I think he's talking to somebody about maybe doing more of that in the future. But excellent. I don't want to speak for him. I don't want to okay. reveal anything. So. No, no, I understand. No, I've, I mean again, getting to know you, looking at the stuff you did with Sean, looking at the stuff you did with Tim Seeley and stuff. Your ID. I'm. Not, I mean, I'm too old for GI Joes. I was already trying to date when uh, the the eighties GI Joe shit was coming out. Oh, uh, I, I understand. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, but I respected it, and it was it was fun when Devils Do had the license, and you guys were uh, cutting your teeth on those great uh, GI Joe books. And again, there's GI Joe stuff uh, at Mike's uh, Cadence uh, Gallery that is for sale. But I wanted to show another great uh, thing here. Is this this is Young Justice again? Yeah, I think that was a free comic book day cover because it has uh, Batman Brave and the Bold version on there. So yeah, I assumed as much. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I got. I, I love playing in those little sandboxes. It's not totally what I do naturally, but it's so close that I, it's it's such a so easy for me to do. It's so fun to draw like that. I get it, man. No, and again, well, and also there have been times, and we're going to get to some Green Arrow pages, but I know there have been times where initially when you've taken over a book, they've asked you to kind of, uh, you know, emulate uh, or to come close to the style of the person that's leaving. And I remember on Green Arrow, and now I'm forgetting, who who was it? Oh, it was uh, Cliff. Yeah, uh, they, when I... I used to be that. I mean, I'm still kind of am. I still get asked to work on books, and because somebody else couldn't, and so I, I, yeah. When I came on to Green Arrow, Black Canary, Cliff left because he had there was something else going on, and he was working on something else. So, and I think the book was doing pretty well under him. So they they asked if. I, they what the way they put it was like your art kind of already exists in that universe. Can yeah. you kind of push it more towards Cliff? And I'm like, yeah, sure. sure. And of course, I mean, really, I and and truly, Mike, you you'll forgive me that a lot of this art is greatest hit stuff rather than what you're currently doing. But again, as you said, no, that's fine. This is this is you know obviously when you were still putting stuff on paper. Yeah, you know, 99 percent of your stuff is digital now. Um, mm -hmm. But I, uh, but I do appreciate your ability to be a chameleon as you got into your Green Arrow run and uh, it was no longer written by Judd Winnick and others came on the book and stuff. I think yeah. there were some really interesting moments. Of course, you created – what was your villain's name again? Uh, we created a bunch of villains, actually. I think like three of them ended up being on the show. Uh, what was we, your name? Like the, the, the Arrow uh, – Cupid was the big one. Cupid, Cupid yeah. uh, She was the – Sexy archer. superhero stalker. Who, yes, uh, like Fatal yeah, she was a, like a she was like a Delta Force commando that it became like a. I, I think she like lost her memory and she's all it, it's too many characters that she was like you know <laughs> she was like she was Harley Quinn but she was also like Merlin she was like all of these different characters rolling. No, I understand a little, little from a psychotic standpoint, Typhoid Mary. Yeah, she's yeah. absolutely like that. She yeah. does a lot like Typhoid Mary. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, that you know, yeah. Well, again, a reader's observation. Um, did and again, forgive me. I'm not your accountant. I don't want to get into your business. <laughs> did they? Did they compensate you for? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Cool. They gave okay, us uh, yeah. for every character. They, there's like I forgot what they call it. Uh, it's like a. It's just essentially a buyout for designing that character. So. Good. Yeah. So it's a. I mean, it's not the. I'm not rich, but yeah, they give yeah. you a little bit for each one. So yeah. No. So Ord, Ordway has told me this. Other creators have told me this, both on the positive side and the negative side. And in yeah. some cases, uh, uh, DC heard or watched the of the interview and be like, "Oh yeah, we forgot about that. We apologize. Here's a check." Yeah, like, I think I had to remind them a couple of times, but yeah, it was fine. Uh, it was uh, so Cupid, uh, Dodger. Okay. Uh, uh, was on there, and uh, I always forget this guy's name. He had uh, he had this superpower where he was super sensitive to hearing. I forgot oh. what his name was, but he was on the Arrow show. That's great. 
No, that's okay. awesome, man. Too goddamn funny. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Here's another another great uh, Green Arrow page and with uh, Hal there as well and uh, Canary and everything and a couple of aliens. Yeah. Looks like it's a Scooby-Doo moment, though. It's a really that. – that's a Judd Winnick kind of page because it's essentially – uh everything in it is real he, he's real corny with his jokes <laughs> i think those are like people wearing alien space suits like they 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 caught these guys and they turn out to be just dudes in alien suits yeah it's a scoopy-doo moment basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mr johnson yeah. I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling superheroes. There's a weird one where there's a weird page in that issue also where where uh Ollie and Diane and Dinah are uh blackmailing some soldiers by like filming them like naked with uh like a dominatrix lady and uh sheep and stuff. And I was like, this is pretty weird for a DC comic. Hilarious. That's yeah. fantastic. Man, honestly, you and Judd and Andrew as well. You guys had great runs on it. And also, and I wish um, maybe, and again, maybe by then you weren't, uh, uh, well, no, you would have had to have been paper. I have no idea. You'll explain to me. But I always said that when Bill Sienkiewicz was inking you, it didn't look like Bill. It didn't look like you. It was something different. Yeah. And and it really was like, wow, that's a very interesting combination. If you yeah. don't mind talking about that for a second. Yeah, that was like, the, that was the later issues of green era black canary so yeah i was still working on paper and what it was is i would um i i that's how i kind of learned how to do it on the computer so because i was like well i'm going to draw these pages for bill sinkevich i know he's going to redraw everything <laughs> yeah so i'm like i'm just going to draw it on the computer and then print it out and then send it to him and i did that and he just went to town and uh yeah it was kind of like a uh soft launch of my digital career no that's um, cool though absolutely yeah, it's yeah. his his and uh the pages i did for uh trinity that uh jerry ordway inked uh are the only pieces of my own art that i keep for myself that's great man yeah Jer jerry's a prince of a guy he was he he's was amazing yeah i love him i love talking to him it's it's wild that he is nice to me and knows who i am I, <laughs> please at least you're a peer yeah. i i feel exactly the same way as jimmy podcast how you doing you know yeah, like who the fuck wants to talk to me other than to help them sell shit and everything and it's like it's it is pretty so, wild yeah M mitch halleck uh the terrificon owner is is really good friends they do a weekly podcast in fact and, oh uh, i didn't know he was on that yep Wow, that's cool. really really good. Yeah, and it's great because they go, they they're fearless. They go to the theater, they see a movie, and they go to like you know a diner or something and eat and you know record their podcast. All right, what do we think of the movie or the TV show or whatever? It's pretty funny. Yeah, and I and I yeah, and I know Jerry does that weekly, so I'm like, all right, I, I kind of pick my places of when to talk yeah, to Jerry on yeah. Rumble and stuff. But no, he's amazing. So as you said, you've first of all, and I've told you this before, and I've told Seeley and other creators, I always feel a kinship with pod, or with comic book uh, cartoonists because a lot of the same moves, especially in the last 20 years, I feel like I'm doing with my skills as a, as a broadcaster or whatever. And as you know, I mean, I got downsized last year from radio. No regrets. It's okay. It was just business. It's, you know, and I still am really good friends with my former um, managers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, but that said, I really kind of went off on my own. I'm like, you know, word balloons working. People like it. Let me see if I can kind of make it into a thing. And thankfully, because of the audience and the support I get from them, you know, I'm able to stay in my place and pay my bills. And it's it, it, I mean, it was really great to hear this from Baltimore. And I know after you established, you're part of that first wave, I think, after establishing yourself at DC and Marvel, you're like, you know, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm not, I, I no, you know, you never say never, but. You yeah, know, you know, and I'm I'm thrilled that things are working out for you from a, a creator own standpoint. Yeah, I don't mean I don't know if I mean would I be the first first wave? I mean, wouldn't that be the the image creators? Yeah, well, you're right <laughs> as far as that goes. You're 100 percent right. I mean, they're Mark, they're definitely Mark. a wave of us that came around that time. You know, I mean, I gotta give credit where credits due is that you know if I hadn't met Tim, I don't think. I would be making my own comic. 
things. I mean, that's wow. sort of, I mean, you wouldn't know it by talking to him now. Cause he's always, you know, he's got to have that, you know, that job that pays him money, but the, he, he always wants to make his own thing. And it kind of, you spend a lot of time with somebody, it kind of rubs off on you. And you're like, well, what can I do that's my own? And then you get the, you do it and then somebody likes it and then you kind of get the bug. And then I understand why everybody wants to make their own comic. Because before it was just like, when I started out, you know, me and Sean McKeever made Gravity. And it's like, we all we want to do is make Spider-Man, you know? And I think there are a lot of people that are like that. And uh, Agreed. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that because I used to have a chip on my shoulder about that. If somebody made because, you know, uh, Kirkman was going on rants for a long time around that time about how, come on, take the blinders off. Come follow me. You know, that kind of thing. And the manifesto like, back in 2009, absolutely, where he was in front of the green screen and like, Listen, stop stop giving your best ideas to DC and Marvel because they're corporations. They're not it's it's not mom and pop that are, you know, taking care of you and stuff like that. Make your own shit. Do what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a I mean, there's nothing about that that isn't valid. Um, but also at the time I was just like, I part of it was fear, and the sure. other part was like, I kind of like, you know, drawing stuff and getting paid for it and not yeah. Having health insurance, sure. Yeah, and there's yeah. a lot of stuff that's left to the, you know, unseen forces when you're doing it all yourself. But it is incredibly rewarding, and I can't imagine not doing that sort of thing now. Um, but, yeah, I I love making my own comics, and I, I'm uh, in, in, I think... There were a bunch of us that started, like, I think Layman was doing, Layman was making those before. Got it, yeah. Though, yeah. Well, um, and that's, and that's honestly, Mike, that's why you're right about the image guys, but I do kind of think of the guys that came after Robert and like in the last 10 or 15 years. Well, there was, years, there was definitely, yeah, there was definitely a boom around that time because it was us, it was like. Uh, Jamie and Kieran on Wicked and Divine and East of West and all that stuff. Yeah, Johnny that Hickman, stuff. absolutely, yeah. Uh, Fear Agent, all of that was going on Rick, around that time. Remender, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever 15 books Rick would have at that time, you know? Uh, he, um, yeah. So, yeah, there was a, 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 a small like pocket of five years where – you know, a lot of us were putting out number ones and they were kind of taken off. And uh, I don't know if it's like that now. I haven't, I mean, it certainly didn't work that way for Battle Book, but they, I, I know that a lot of, uh, it, uh, a lot of, com it's, it's like that everywhere, but a lot of comics aren't uh, shooting a number one the way they used to. No, but again, but maybe, and I don't know, um, it seems like the creator owned people have found their audience. And it's enough of an audience to keep it going and stuff. Um, well, I mean the 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 economy of comics is different now. So yes. it's like a lot of people are are taking the like the whole internet model to heart and 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 nurturing their fan base that right. way. Yes. Whereas I used to use the internet to network with people to find jobs, and now they're using it as a way. People are using it as a way to just you're my audience. I'm talking directly to you now. Yeah, that again, that's how I use it, certainly. Yeah. And, um, have you considered uh, crowd... Have you done crowdfunding for I've that? never done a Kickstarter or anything for so. myself. But I have been talking about it, and I, I, I think I probably will within a year, because okay. I already know what it is I'm going to do and everything. Oh, that's great, Mike. That's terrific. Yeah, I just don't... Uh, haven't really talked about it because you know that stuff's intimidating but i mean i'm i'm friends with ryan brown who's done like 73 successful kickstarters so hopefully he can give me some advice and i'm we'll doing see. uh i'm doing brownie and uh and uh, charles soul's panel at c2e2 and one of my favorite ryan brown uh, memories is uh and i love evan dorkin milk and cheese great guy 
Evan can Evan's a sweetheart, but he can also like kind of pick a fight just sometimes. He's one of those guys like Shaken, where I'm saying you're scared of that guy, but he's one of the nicest guys. Such a sweetheart. Yeah. And I was on a panel with him, Jeremy Bastion, and Ryan Brown talking about creator owned comics. He had no idea who Ryan was. <laughs> Ryan starts working his mojo and talking about Kickstarter and stuff. And Evan does a total 180 of who the fuck is this kid to? Wow, this guy really understands this shit. And it was so lovely. Like after the panel, Evan's like, hey, uh, can I ask you more questions about crowdfunding? And Ryan's like, yeah, of course, any, any problem. And it was just so great. It was just like he slowly Jedi mind tricked Evan yeah. into, wow, he's good. I like. <laughs> so no, and yeah, Brian. Well, like Ryan's got a little, uh, a little Eddie Haskell magic about him. <laughs> He can worm his way into your heart. Dude, um, man, you know, um, I like to share. I get a lot of great uh, press releases from um, people that want to market their horror movies. And you and Seely and Brownie are like these connoisseurs of these C-level movies. Uh, and maybe I, here's the thing. -level. <laughs> I think it's unfair of you to put them into my category as far as that goes. Because I think they... You're the king. They like good movies. <laughs> they're they're aficionados of good horror movies, whereas I like to watch the terrible stuff on purpose. So well, I don't know if I'm the 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 demographic. <laughs> well, but I love that you're you're paying attention to what comes out in these C level movies and stuff. Yeah. And um, all right, I'm going to ask you because I just had the um the director on last week uh gary jones is his name and he as a producer and director has discovered this eastern european actor whose stage name is uh roberto bronzi and oh the, was, the the charles bronson look alike? yep yep yeah. unbelievable and he just made a prison escape movie with him that is absolutely fantastic a lot of fun i haven't a seen of any of his movies he doesn't speak english does he I that's I didn't I didn't ask Gary directly that I think he just he, shows up in movies and just doesn't say anything because it adds well, to the mystique. He's got he's got dialogue in this film. In fact, I'll even put up a, an image of it. Is it but, uh, is it dubbed? Well, no, and it's him talking. But I have a feeling, kind of like in the '60s when they would have uh, beautiful foreign uh, actresses just phonetically kind of say their dialogue, and it's like, all right, their their inflection's wrong, but you don't care. It's fine. You know, here, uh, this is this is the movie I'm, I'm uploading in now. It's real spooky how much he looks like him. Oh, yeah, there he is. Robert Bronzy escaped from Death Block 13. Death Block 13. <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're trying to remind us of and there's like there's one of his titles is like a a play on Death Wish. And uh, and yeah, man, it's truly like the director was awesome, could not have been nicer. I every, everybody, I swear to God, I'm gonna put it up one more time. And those I'm are like more. the movies that they put up in like Tracy Morgan's room on 30 Rock, you know, right. <laughs> like the fake, the fake movies. movies. Yes, yes, it's a blast. It's a, and um, Nick Totoro is the bad guy in it. Perfect. Oh, what Lawrence Hilton, to him? I guess now I know Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, Freddie Boom Boom Washington from Welcome Back, Cotter is a is a like uh, an agent, a DEA agent and stuff. Hilarious. Fantastic. Wow. So yeah, man. Robert, and I and I told Gary, I'm like, all right, the next Bronzy movie, you know, again, I, I don't believe Bronzy speaks English or I would try and get it. No, him. I don't think he does. I I I I would love to watch one because I haven't yet, but I've known about him for a while. I, I didn't know that he was like a little cottage industry. I didn't know they were just making movies for him. Absolutely. Well, you know, and 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 of course in the foreign market. These things go like gangbusters. Yeah, so, I wonder if there are people that are watching these movies thinking that Charles Bronson never died. <laughs> I don't know. Like he's like a vampire or something. Exactly. Oh, Charles no. Bronson vampire movie. <laughs> yes, please. I got to <laughs> suck your neck right now. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Oh, here you oh. go. Ed Ed saw Mystic You. Mystic You was fun and you created a lot of new characters. Oh, this is you. Excuse me. I'm no. sorry, Mike. I was thinking that was a <laughs> no, no. I remember Mystic You absolutely. So this is a great question for Med. Mystic You was fun. You created a lot of new characters. Any interest in more storytelling there? 
now with these infinite frontier possibilities? Very good question, Ed. Yeah, I would love to. And I think, uh, um, I think the writer would too. She, um, why am I blanking on her name? That's embarrassing. I, uh, well, I'll look it up while we're talking. About <laughs> Did she? I, Shame why, I, I hear you, man. Yeah, this is terrible. Um, but yeah, great, great vertigo. Wasn't it? It was a vertigo book, right? No, it was a, it was a, um, it was a main, uh, mainline title, but it was geared more towards getting newer readers, maybe younger readers. It was, it was definitely a young adult because, uh, the, the writer, uh, Alice, is it? Alyssa, Alyssa, Alyssa Quitney. Quitney. Yes. Alyssa Quitney writes young adult novels. So it was right. The, like right on the beginning of them doing that sort of thing. And, uh, and, and so she kind of, it was kind of brilliant. It was a lot like the new Star Trek movies and she found a way to make Zatanna new, but still keep the old, uh, continuity. I'm with you. So it's like this pocket universe where she's going to like a Hogwarts kind of magic school. And, uh, and it had new versions of of older characters like uh um why am i blanking on all these now yeah, anyway a lot of a lot of old like vertigo s characters and you know uh like uh, tim hunter and people like that or no tim hunter was not in it but it was okay. characters like it was actually old characters like uh kid eternity or kid uh yeah that kind of stuff he kid eternity wasn't in it but uh, um here, I'm gonna I'm gonna put up a cover. It's not you, Felix Faust's son. Oh yes, of course. Um, there's sure. a lot of that stuff. And uh, here, hopefully this will help. I'm gonna bring up a cover, and uh, you might uh, this might help you. And but we again, it's it's not you, unfortunately. It's not you doing the cover. It's a painted cover. Oh yeah, it was uh, uh, Juan Tedesco did the covers for those. Oh wow. That's he's awesome. an amazing painter. He does. Yes. All, he's all. He's super in demand right now. But um, yeah, she had ideas for that past because we kind of left it on a cliffhanger. So, oh yeah. wow! And that's that's June Moon, the Enchantress, uh, and uh, um, I'm forgetting the guy with that's the turban. Who who was the old? Oh, oh Ibis. Ibis. No, uh, the old, he was a white character back in the day, but he had a, a turban and a cape, and he was... Uh, I was thinking the Fawcett character, I Biz the Invincible. No, it's not him. Anyway, I'm being a terrible creator, because I don't know anything about... It's not Green Llama, about. obviously. Green Llama was a different publisher. No, yeah. It was yeah, somebody. I wonder who it was. I'm trying to think of... It was like, somebody you would know... If I told you, and I okay. I'm embarrassed that I can't remember, but Cain and Abel were in it. They were oh, like, that's awesome. at, they worked at the school. You know, Madame Xanadu was in it. I love uh, Madame Xanadu. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it that's a cool. lot of cool stuff, and I loved working on it. That's awesome, man. No, no, no. I'm so, uh, so glad that I that wish up. we could do more. If they did more, I would be there in a heartbeat. I hear you. Well, and I'm sorry, sorry, Alyssa, for forgetting. Because it is already a lot. Oh, of ago. course. Uh, Carrie says he thinks we're talking about Sargon. The Sargon. Sargon. That's it. Thank yeah. you very much. Absolutely, man. Yeah, shame on me for not remembering Sargon. Absolutely. I yes. love I love all those golden Sargon names. the Sorcerer. Yes. Absolutely. Hilarious. Yeah. And Doctor Doctor 13, I think. Was oh, was he in there as well? Uh, there were a lot. Oh, who? Uh, Mr. E. Mr. E Perfect. was in it. And then that uh, Doc was Dr. Occult in it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love Doctor Occult. One of the because his the person that is stuck in Doctor. Uh, I don't want to give anything away. All right, because yeah, I love again Doctor Occult uh, was one of the original uh, Action Comics heroes, and I I love like him and Slam Bradley. Yeah, and Doctor, some of these other yeah. you know uh, street clothes heroes yeah. as much as the superheroes of the of the early Golden Age. Doctor so, yeah. Occult, Mister E were were big parts of it. Yeah. It says also Plop, the sentient green slime. Was yes, in Plop was in it. I forgot about Plop from the old uh, <laughs> Vertigo books. Yeah. Hilarious. That's fantastic. Yeah, well, Plop was very important to Alyssa. 
I, I she I know that she made a big deal about having him in there. That's awesome. Well, I hope you guys get or it, it or whatever plop is. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys get a chance to get back to it at some point. That'd be very yeah. cool. Anything you want to promote as far as uh, current stuff <sighs> that you can talk about, maybe, unless it's all behind the scenes right now, still and not ready to well, be. Well, no, there's nothing in behind the scenes. I mean, everything that I'm working on, I can talk about. I, I mean, I, like the th- the stuff that's been taking up all my time lately. Uh, is, I mean, of course, Mystery Science Theater, 13th season. Um, that will be on their own uh, their own streaming platform they're going to put out. So that's not, doesn't exist yet. But they're filming it right now. And okay. uh, I'm working on uh, a three-issue run of Teen Titans Academy. Speaking of uh, oh, cool. Mi- Mystic U, it's a lot like that. Um, and, uh, I'm also working on Ninjak with, uh, with, uh, Jeff Parker now. With Parker. Yes. Yep. Very cool. And well, that has been super fun. I really love working on that. Let's find a night, seriously, a word balloon night where yeah. we'll have Parker on and the two. Yeah, the two sure. Talk. Absolutely. Because yeah, we've had, I mean, I, a lot of times I don't like having, uh, two people on because I feel like someone's going to get short shrift. But having known you guys as long as we've all known each other, I cannot stuff, talk. I can just sit there. Shut up! No, no, no. I can we do this. Want you to do. We want you to talk. It's you know, please. That would be good. And 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 Jeff's been a weekly guy because he's on my kinescope. Show. Yeah, he's one of your nerds. I've seen you guys. I've seen you guys in your old people shows. It's true. 1949. This show, Jack Lemon was a young man when he made. He's this. barely older than me. He should know about all this stuff. It's it's out. You know who created that show? It's Gabe, Gabe Hardman. Oh We're yeah, doing the Twilight Zone. And the Adam's youngest West. of all of us. These these oh, man, somebody put like well, a seventy five year old brain in a forty year old guy's body. We knew that. Good luck. One hundred percent. It was great though because he really was like, um, if it's okay, can we? Uh, I mean, he's like, what do we want? What do you want to do next? And I'm like, he still wants to podcast every yeah. week. I'm like, what do you want to do next? He's like, how about Golden Age, tel- tel- oh, Golden Age Television? Like he's such a, he's such an old movie freak. And a lot of those great directors, writers, and actors kind of made their mark in the 60s and yeah. 70s and cut their teeth in TV, early TV. George Roy Hill, The Sting, and uh, and Butch Cassidy, and George Sidney Roy Lumet, Hill, and yeah, John yeah. Frankenheimer, all these amazing directors. Patty Chevsky, the great writer. And like I said, James Dean made more... TV shows that he made. He only made three movies before he died. Yep. He made a couple dozen TV shows. So it's kind of cool, like looking at these people when they're young. Rod Steiger, you know, amazing old classic Hollywood actors. This is their first gigs. <laughs> Rod Steiger's been a bunch of movies that I like, which is not a good thing. <laughs> yes, he has. You know, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, he's a lot been of, a lot of my horror movies that I watch. You're 100 percent right. Absolutely, he's always entertaining in them. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, he brings his class. Well, it's like poor Ray Milland when Ray Milland uh, got older and would just take anything. And as I've learned, especially being in the same union as these guys, the Screen Actors Guild, it's like, yeah, they take these shitty jobs to really maintain their health insurance as they were getting yeah, older. Sure, sure. And and really, yeah. So, I mean, that's all these uh, men and women. You know, and again, that's awesome. I'm glad they get the gigs. I'm glad the directors kind of recognize that Having Vera Miles at 75 will elevate your movie and stuff. And same with Steiger and stuff. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we gotta we gotta wrap. Uh I'm so oh, glad you I, I want to mention uh Please. I have a book coming uh that I'm working on with Raver Roberts called The Rock Gods of Jackson, Tennessee. Uh, but that's gonna be a while, but I wanted to mention it because I am working on that. Excellent. And that's it. Okay, no problem, <laughs> man. No, and uh we'll do a ninjack uh, talk on uh Okay. Uh, we're going in, in the next few weeks, maybe in December. Uh, everybody, again, Mike's Cadence page. Uh, you can see it right there on the crawl, but it's also right at the top of the chat as well. And let me just like, w- w- again, check out all this amazing stuff that Mike did back in the day. And I'm telling you, it's a fucking steal. It seriously is a goddamn steal. I, I thank I, you. Yeah, that's very kind of you. Well, I want, and it's well, that's good. And I, I mean, these are. This is an art buying crowd, and uh, they will find amazing pages at very reasonable prices, and uh, that's great. 
I'm, I'm happy to help you sell, bud. Thank so you. you know that. So absolutely. Uh, thanks, everybody. And thanks for watching. Uh, in just five minutes, I'm going to be talking to Ryan Dunleavy and Fred Van Lenthe, another two of my favorite people. As you look at Mike's face, you know, action guys, absolutely a action presidents, yeah. action philosophers, the comic book history of comic books, the comic book history of animation. Always, yeah, those guys are fun. And yeah, and I just love this kind of documentary comic book format that they've created. I hung out with them in Baltimore. I love those guys. I love uh, Fred's wife, Crystal Skillman, mm -hmm. my New York playwright. So we're going to have a lot of fun talking to them in uh, just five minutes. So join us then. Until